Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to this month's episode, or whatever, catch up thingy of Todd and Dane's Indie Read Along. So this month I read R. Doris by Charles Heathcote. I'm going to give it a, a review in a second, but first I want to update you about the next book. So it hasn't actually arrived yet at the time of filming, but I wanted to film my review while it's still fresh in my head. But the book I am going to be reading next month, and you are free to join in with me if you would like, it is Salvage by Duncan Ralston. So he's a horror author. We used to be published by the same press, a press called Book Trope, which is now no longer around. We were actually both on the horror imprint called Forsaken, so there we go. But um, yeah, I'm reading that next month, and then the month after, I will probably be back to a booktuber's book. To be honest, I didn't put much much thought into what book to read after R. Doris, so I've just fallen back on one from my list of indie books that I want to read. So yeah, you're welcome to read that with me in the month of July, or you can also read along with Todd. I'll link to his video below so you can see what he's picked as his book. And yeah, we will post our reviews for that at the end of next month. I don't know if I explained that very well, but whatever. I'm just excited. Let's just jump straight into R. Doris. So this is by Charles Heathcote. He is on BookTube and also AuthorTube. I'd recommend you check out his channel, actually. His wall gathering videos in particular are hilarious. He just sits in his car and talks. So I'm going to read you the blurb of this. The Partridge Muse Women's Institute have announced a garden safari and Doris Copeland pillar of the community with a tenure as Maria in The Sound of Music that involved an awful gastrointestinal bug, plans on securing her position as Fifth House. Join her as she battles ne'er-do-well slugs, searches for the perfect artisan sausage, and comes against her mortal enemy, Janice Dooley of Little Street, all whilst maintaining a perfectly silver crinned hairstyle. Told from the perspective of her long-suffering husband, Arold, a man who would be content to sit at home watching reruns of Ground Force. This is the first book of monologues featuring R. Doris. I guess the first thing to say is that you're not going to really get this book or get the most from this book unless you sort of appreciate a very specific type of British sense of humour. It's a very northern sense of humour. But it also reminds me of shows like uh, oh, Keeping Up Appearances, for example, with Hyacinth Bouquet. And uh, that kind of comedy vibe, I think. What's great about this is that we sort of have an unreliable narrator in the form of Arold, Doris's husband. And the two of them are, are, are older, shall we say, they're in their 70s. And you don't often really see characters of that age as protagonists or narrators or anything like that in, in contemporary fiction. So that's why it was really interesting to read. Also, it's definitely like a comic book. I would, I don't know how you would, would you, I mean, other people have read this, so maybe they'll let me know in the comments how they would categorise it, but I would call it, like, comic contemporary, in the same way that, that Terry Pratchett is comic fantasy, this is comic contemporary, but, for me, I actually thought that, uh, the writing style and the sense of humour, it reminded me, I said in my, uh, my review on Goodreads and my website, socialbookshelves.com, sneaky promo there, it reminded me of Douglas Adams, if Douglas Adams had been born and bred in Wigan. It's got this, it has, it has this delightfully northern sense of humour, even in terms of how, uh, Harold speaks, is like, well, I said to her, I, I said to her, she should, uh, I can't do the accent, but, you know, that's why she's our Doris. Because that's what northerners say. They'll be like, oh, our Doris came round. I'm going to read you out the first paragraph. Because I think it gives you a great example of what the entire book is going to be like. And so, uh, again, this is from the point of view of Arold. Doris is a long-suffering husband. And uh, so we begin with, our Doris has developed an unhealthy obsession with slugs. She's in the garden from breakfast until the one show, finding the beggars and pouring salt on them. She likes to watch them die, keeps her eyes peeled as they shrink, curling in on themselves until they resemble, well, dead slugs, really. I never was one for similes. A dead slug is a dead slug in my book, and you can beg her off trying to tell me otherwise. She did try using beer for a while, until I discovered where all of my Guinness were going. I wouldn't mind if our Doris had a drinking problem. She might be less keen to donate my socks to Sue Ryder. But I do mind when she's using my well-earned ale to pickle slugs. Becca used to work for Sue Ryder, so that was quite cool. Straight in the, the first page there, I was like, I need to bookmark this. We have this great paragraph here that you're only going to get if you watch Coronation Street. And if you've watched it for a while, I guess. I, I tried it on Becca and I don't think she got it. But I do because my mum loves Coronation Street. So anyway, we've got Harold here and he says... Uh, 
Do uh, Doris wants him. And he says, uh, I knew it were important, so I turned off the television. Something I don't do meekly. Our cat once dug up her at number 42's daffodils, and I didn't stop him until I saw Richard Hillman drive Gail into the canal. Don't know why I turned it into a Yorkshireman then. It does say into the canal, not to canal. That is definitely more Yorkshire. This is very Macclesfield. And my mum lives at number 42 as well. We have this great throwaway line about the Daily Mail. So, uh, our Doris, she's eating her breakfast and Harold says, She sat there, spoon in one hand, copy of the Daily Mail in the other, reading all about how eating too much celery can lead to cancer. Which is the kind of thing that the Daily Mail would publish. And Harold says, there's no issue for me there then. I've not been able to choose celery since I got my dentures. No, ma no matter the amount of fixident I put on them. The uh, layout is great, I will mention as well. Look, great little chapter headings, perfectly formatted and justified. A plus. I'm going to read you uh, paragraph one of chapter three, school reunion. Our Doris is organising a school reunion. I've no idea why, since half of our classmates are dead and the other half have been written off as too close to the underclasses to correctly employ the proper decorum necessary for a themed dinner party. But that's our Doris for you. She once invited the big issue man to afternoon tea because she wanted to show off the violet grey that she cared about those in difficult circumstances. Once he left, she had the upholstery steam cleaned and the couch disinfected. I think one of the reasons why I like this is because I know people like our Doris. My gran is like our Doris. I think most, I mean, I'm from the Midlands rather than the North, but I think most, most British people have a nan like our Doris. I love this, this amazing line. Harold's got a hangover. And this line was so good. It, it just made, it made me crack up just reading it out loud. I, I read it out to Becca because I thought it was so funny. So he's, bear in mind, he's just had a night of heavy drinking. He's woken up in a wheelbarrow and he says, staggered out on my wheelbarrow and into the kitchen. Once you get older, you don't so much as get a hangover as wonder whether you've reached the end. <laughs> Such a good line. <laughs> we have this moment where Doris goes to, to Harold's. He's got uh, an allotment and Doris goes over to the allotment and uh, she sprays weed killer on someone's like newly bedded flowers and then accidentally treads in Peter's prized marrow. And uh, so it says here, Peter still weren't over our Doris stepping in his prize marrow. He couldn't speak to me for a few weeks after. I kept my head low, stuck to a brief nod of the head. He were more faithful to that marrow than he was to his wife. I know people like Peter as well. We have this moment as well where, where our Doris goes to the dentist and she has a cavity and she's the kind of person that just refuses to accept stuff like that. So she, So anyway, here's what happens. You're going to need a filling, Mrs. Copeland. Our Doris moved that fast she knocked the floating light into the nurse's head. Our Doris was seething, all beetle eyes and sucked lips. She said to Alderson, she yelled, Who do you think you are to go spreading rumours like that? You have a cavity, Mrs. Copeland, Alderson repeated, clearly a man who hadn't learned to play dead when faced by a bear. I have a cavity? Have you heard him, our Harold? I have a cavity! She turned on him at that point and said to him, she said, I'll give you a cavity in your bleeding great forehead in a minute. The nurse piped up at this and said, we will not tolerate violence towards our staff. Violence? Violence? He wants to drill into my teeth and you call me violent? You're making it up so you can charge me extra. Sitting there thinking that because I'm a heterosexual white woman with conservative leanings and a penchant for floral blouses from the British home stores that you can charge me an extortion amount for a bit of tin foil on me molar. She bundled her coat in her arms, something she wouldn't usually do because she'd bought it from the boutique for £80 and she warned against flashing your size labels at anyone in case they used it against you to your circle of friends. By the way, I've just noticed a typo there. It says women instead of woman. So Charlie, look out for that. Because I am a heterosexual white woman. However, I didn't notice that in my first read through and I didn't notice any typos in my first read through. So there we go. Our Doris finds out that the Antiques Roadshow is coming to the leisure center as well. And uh, so Harold says, uh, she went on a raid of the house. She were determined. She put curry in her Tupperware so it would appear aged. She never used them, maintains that Tupperware is a sign that one has eyes too big for their belly. One should never waste as much as to warrant the use of Tupperware. Still, she believed that an authentic used Tupperware dish might elicit some emotional reaction from someone. We have this moment when their grandson gets drunk as well and uh, Harold, he explains, uh, he goes, I said to her, I said, everyone gets drunk, our Doris. It'll do Theo some good to know what a hangover feels like. 
She gave me the look and said to me, she said, Underage alcoholism is a perfect pastime for the lower classes, R. Harold. They've got nothing better to do. Our grandson, however, drinks black coffee, not white lightning. If I ever catch Alfred Simpson anywhere near our grandson again, I'll let everyone know just where he hides those pork pies. You have this moment when, uh, when Doris calls him Harold and he, get, and he goes, What are you doing pronouncing the H in my name, R. Doris? You've never minded before. And her response will stick with me until the day I die because it's the response that sealed my fate. Our Doris said to me, she said, I have aspirations, our Harold, and they most certainly don't stretch to dropping your H in front of company. We have this bit of conversation here. Uh, someone goes, my uncle Ronald always said as there was no such thing as the middle classes, just lower class folk with too much time on their hands. Alf nodded. Exactly what someone higher class would say. So yeah, I, I'm going to finish my review here because I don't want to go on for too long but I did very much enjoy this. This has my, been my favourite indie book so far for the indie read-along and of the year in fact and it will probably be in my Q2 favourites as well. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. It wasn't quite perfect and like one or two times there were maybe a few pacing issues but it was very very good. I don't think it's going to have appeal for everybody but if you've enjoyed what has been read out to you today you're going to love this book because it's hilarious. But not everyone's going to get that sense of humour. So that's what i got for you. Our Doris by Charles Hico. So on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book. And if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. P.S. There is a sequel to it which I will hopefully be getting to soon.